Doors burst open, allowing the gurney to come speeding through, followed by a gaggle of Concern Foundation scientists and medical personnel. Everyone was abuzz, anxious at the troubling development and fearful over the fate of the patient lying on the examination bed. It wasn't exactly a rare occurrence for someone working at an SCP Foundation facility to need serious medical treatment, more often because of a grievous injury or psychological episode incurred whenever a dangerous anomaly breached containment. After all, working for the Foundation was nothing if not hazardous to your health. But personnel being injured? That was so commonplace at the Foundation that it was practically mundane, just another ordinary part of the job. It certainly never garnered this much attention, with every researcher and medic on site all clamoring to try and assist or even just get a look at who was on the gurney. It wasn't a member of personnel. It was an anomaly. SCP-049 was sick. Nothing about the plague doctor's behavior had seemed out of the ordinary. He was normal, at least as much as a beak-masked robe creature could be. Until, that is, one morning, SCP-049 had just collapsed in his holding cell. The security camera watching him had recorded the entire ordeal, with guards alerting the research teams and eventually calling paramedics to come and escort the plague doctor to the on-site infirmary. SCP-049 was noticeably weaker, confused, even afraid, some onlookers seemed to think. Uh, there's no sign of physical injury, Dr. Cooper noted aloud trying his best to examine SCP-049 while the gurney was racing down the hallways, all without touching the plague doctor's skin directly. One touch, and he would die in an instant. All signs seemed to point to something internal. Nobody had entered SCP-049's cell in the previous 24 hours. The security footage proved that the only people who had even come close to the plague doctor were authorized Foundation staff. Dr. Cooper was right. There was no indication that SCP-049 had suffered any external damage. If he'd been attacked, it would have been caught by the security footage. It had to be some kind of illness. The plague doctor was slipping in and out of consciousness. He could move and groan slightly, but only had a few fleeting periods of lucidity. But if he was ill, what with? What was the cause? Any symptoms, if there had been any leading up to his collapse, must have been so subtle that they had gone completely undetected by everyone that had recently encountered SCP-049. And was there a risk of cross-contamination? Was everyone rushing alongside or following the speeding gurney now infected also? As they reached the infirmary, Foundation medics were already waiting, having prepped the area for SCP-049's arrival. Wearing gloves over their hands to avoid lethal direct skin contact, the medical staff hoisted SCP-049 onto a bed, just as Dr. Omel arrived, pushing his way through the crowd of other researchers and doctors who had piled into the sickbay. All right, the show's over. Back up and give him some room to breathe, Omel had shouted before turning to get a closer look at SCP-049. We've had a similar situation to this before. If it goes the same way, then there's nothing to worry about. At that moment, SCP-049 briefly became lucid once more. 049, it's Dr. Omel. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I can, the plague doctor replied weakly. Please, help me, doctor. Well, I'll, I'll do my best, Omel said, trying to keep the beak surgeon's spirits up. It's a real good thing I was here that time you laid an egg. At least we know what to expect this time, right? I'm not, <coughs> not laying another egg. SCP-049 rasped through his beak, his pain obvious in his tone. What? And what the heck's going on? It happened, he answered. Pestilence. It is the pestilence. Before losing consciousness again, the entire infirmary went deathly silent. The pestilence, the vaguely defined disease that SCP-049 spent his life seeking out and trying to cure. Now it had infected him and could potentially claim his life unless the Foundation could help him. There was one big problem. Nobody had any idea exactly what the pestilence really was, except for SCP-049. The next few hours were a non-stop circus. An emergency quarantine order was issued, as everyone that had accompanied the gurney had to be screened and tested for any possible signs of contagion. If the pestilence had actually managed to infect SCP-049, there was a high chance it could spread, especially with so many research staff and medics present. The infirmary was sealed off, 
Any of the medics who were cleared were issued a hazmat suit so they could continue to aid the sick plague doctor. Although confirming that staff were 100% clear of the pestilence wasn't exactly straightforward, nobody knew what signs or symptoms to even look for. Normally, it was only SCP-049 and him alone that could sense the presence of the pestilence in a human being, and his only cure was turning them into a zombified instance of SCP-049-2. A momentary panic started to spread amongst the Foundation personnel who had been near SCP-049, stemming from one idea about what the pestilence really was, the bubonic plague. It didn't seem too far of a stretch given SCP-049's appearance, resembling the clothing worn by medieval plague doctors when the Black Death ravaged most of Europe during the 1300s. Given that the bubonic plague was fatal, once this paranoid rumor set in amongst the Foundation staff, some began to break down, believing they had contracted the deadly medieval infection. However, after several hours of additional screening and testing, nobody on site showed even a hint of bubonic plague in their systems. But all the while, SCP-049 wasn't getting any better. We're still in the dark here, Dr. Omel said, his frustration fogging up the visor of his hazmat suit. If the pestilence isn't bubonic plague, then what the hell is it? And how do we cure it? I've been going through the archives, every interaction that SCP-049 has ever had that we've got recorded, and so far there's nothing conclusive," Dr. Cooper replied, swiping through various incident reports on a tablet. All the Foundation had ever truly known of the pestilence was based on SCP-049's own testimony. They were aware it was an insidious infection, capable of ultimately causing death in a subject that had contracted it. But anyone that SCP-049 had ever operated on and turned into an SCP-049-2 zombie hadn't previously exhibited any anomalous or even just unusual symptoms. The Plague Doctor had only ever described the disease in vague terms, and he alone had been able to sense it. I went back over Dr. Ham's notes after his interview with SCP-049, Cooper continued. Based on these, it looks like there are a few working theories about what the pestilence really is, but, but what? Omel replied, Come on out with it! Well, they're pretty abstract, to say the least, the fellow Foundation researcher admitted. The entity is at the top of his list. You're kidding, Dr. Omel sighed. The entity was something that the Foundation had long been aware of, but had no way of confirming if it even existed. It had been learned about from SCP-5000, a heavily damaged absolute exclusion harness. The suit's data logs told of an alternate timeline wherein the SCP Foundation turned on humanity and began using various anomalies to commit a worldwide apocalypse. This had been done according to the information recovered from the harness in order to combat a being known only as the Entity, or IT. Apparently this being had managed to latch on to the human race's collective subconscious and had been manipulating the entire planet for some nefarious reason. The entity was what caused humans to feel pain, and subsequently fed on that pain. Although nobody was aware of its intentions, the foundation of this SCP-5000 timeline had deemed it to be so diabolical that they had resorted to wiping out humanity at all costs to prevent the entity from ever succeeding. I think it's a theory with legs, one of the medics chimed in. It can't be, it's so dumb, Dr. Omel replied dismissively, scratching his head. Exactly, it's so dumb but so brilliant, the medic replied. No, it's just dumb, Omel shouted. Dr. Omel's right, according to the logs from SCP-5000, the entity affects everyone, Dr. Cooper pointed out. But SCP-049 doesn't attempt to operate on everyone it meets. If it was trying to combat the entity, it would have to cure every human being alive. Where are we at with treating SCP-049? Dr. Omel asked. The longer we spend yakking and doing nothing, he could be getting even closer to death. Ah, we're seeing no chance, the medic answered solemnly. The Foundation's immediate course of action was to administer SCP-049 with a single dose of SCP-500, also known as the Panacea. Coming in the form of a red pill, SCP-500 was known to cure a person of all diseases. But as we know, Panacea doesn't have one consistent rate of effectiveness, the medic explained. It can take longer to heal a subject depending on the disease they've been infected with. So... SCP-500 could be working? Dr. Omel asked. Like I've said, we've not detected any change in SCP-049's condition. 
The medic replied. It could be that the treatment isn't working at all because it can't isolate the pestilence on the Plague Doctor's system. As far as SCP-500 might know, there's nothing for it to actually heal. Great, really, that's just wonderful. We have a miracle cure that works on any illness, and it's just not doing what it's meant to. <sighs> Homel sighed. What about next of kin? Any luck there? He's notoriously good at evading capture, believe me, I know. But if we tell him what's going on... Not my department, the medic shrugged. I'd say the fact nobody's brought him in yet means that our field agents still haven't found him. But your guess is as good as mine. Oh, very insightful, Dr. Omel said, his frustration coming out as sarcasm. Just get the hell out of here and see what you can do for SCP-049. And send someone else to give us updates next time. Hold on, Omel, Dr. Cooper interjected. Take a look at Dr. Ham's notes and I've come up with another theory about the pestilence here. Well, what is- It's death. The room felt quiet. Death! As in the fundamental law of the entire universe, the entire state of not being alive? Omel exploded with outraged disbelief. Listen, what if specifically dying of natural causes could itself be the pestilence? Ham was pretty old when he first interviewed SCP-049, right? And they had a number of sessions together until one day, SCP-049 turns on him, senses the pestilence, and gives Dr. Ham the whole treatment. He zombified him. I know you don't need to be coy, Cooper. R right. Well, during their very first interview at Site-19, 049 said he could sense a lot of death there, but not all had that many traces of the pestilence, the researcher explained. So, what if SCP-049 had started to realize the odd little signs of Dr. Ham aging? Graying hair, wrinkles, the usual suspects, and instead of waiting for Ham to die, he cured him immediately. Here, in an interview, 049 said the following. Do you wait to remove rotten timbers until the hall collapses on top of you? No. You find them, and you pull them out and replace them with those untouched by rot. And most of all, you do not simply mock the structure, because it now looks different to you. It is strong. It is free of disease. But not everyone he's killed or cured has been Ham's age. There's no way. He would have spotted that pattern, Omel reasoned. And if he was trying to stop people dying, he wouldn't start out his procedure with that lethal touch of his. Think about it, though. How does SCP-049 cure people? You said it yourself, he zombifies them. He reanimates them. We're all infected to him. Everyone dies, after all. So he cures that with those horrific resurrections and thus cures death. A flabbergasted Dr. Omel finished the sentence. So, assuming you're right, and the pestilence really is just death itself, SCP is in the other room, dying from completely natural causes. And that might be the only thing even we can't fix. Dr. Cooper nodded solemnly. Tell that to the O5 Council, Omel muttered. Suddenly one of the medics, a different one as requested, came bursting into the room. Uh, sir, the, the next of kin, one of the field agents has recovered SCP-049-J. The plague doctor was quickly rushed into an operating theater, while doctors Omel and Cooper watched from beyond a glass screen. A shorter version of SCP-049, his son, SCP-049-J, was guided into the room. The little plague doctor timidly approached its father. Are you sure this will work? Dr. Cooper asked. I read the file on SCP-049-J. Apparently, despite all its claims of being a magical wizard doctor, he's never actually healed anything. It made a few conditions even worse, in fact. I was around when Junior over there was born, Dr. Omel said. You know what SCP-049 said to me when his egg hatched? Uh, what? He is the cure. That's how I know this is going to work. Now go check out SCP-049 Boiled, Scrambled, and Fried, Plague Dr. Tail, and A Day in the Life of SCP-049.